All right, so for uh, the rest of our time today, we're going to talk about cell respiration. In particular today, we're going to talk about aerobic cell respiration. That word aerobic means it's respiration that requires what? Air. In particular, oxygen. oxygen. You've got to have oxygen. And the nice thing about... The nice thing about aerobic respiration is that it, the equation for it is essentially the opposite of the equation for what? Photosynthesis. You flip them around. So, so let's look at this equation to begin with. To do respiration, first of all, an organism has to have food. And we're usually going to think of that in terms of sugar, glucose. The organism has to have oxygen, oxygen gas. This is the reason we breathe in oxygen. And also, well, th those, are the, those are the reactants. The products, what the what's the organism trying to make when they do cell respiration? ATP. Trying to make ATP. That's the purpose. They don't make energy, right? Where does the energy come from to make the ATP? <laughs> After that. How do you get your energy? From your food, from the glucose, right? Energy's coming from the sugar, and essentially that respiration moves the energy from here into here. It's about transferring that energy. As sort of waste products of cell respiration, we make carbon dioxide, which we breathe out, and we make some water, which we may breathe some of that out as water vapor, but we're going to use that water. We want to recycle that water as well. Another question. What organisms on Earth do respiration? All living things. Every living thing. Now, not all of them do the aerobic version. There's also an anaerobic version that doesn't need oxygen. Most things do both. We'll talk about the differences in that later on. But for right now, realize that this equation for aerobic respiration is just the equation for photosynthesis turned around. The reactants for photosynthesis are what? in terms of this equation. The reactants for photosynthesis are the products of what? Aerobic respiration. And the reactants for aerobic respiration are what? The products of photosynthesis. I'm hoping you see that that means that, that us, as animals and plants, are kind of dependent on each other, right? They make stuff we need. They make food, they make glucose, and they make oxygen. We have to have those things. But we make some things they need too, right? They need carbon dioxide. It's a cycle. And what cycle are, am I describing there with photosynthesis and cell respiration? It's the cycle of carbon. It's how carbon in the universe, in the, not the universe, in the earth, gets cycled over and over again. The amount of carbon on Earth is essentially the same as it's always been. The carbon in you at one time might have been in a dinosaur. It might have been in George Washington. That carbon's been recycled over and over and over and over. And the two main processes that cycle carbon, photosynthesis, cell respiration. All right. Um, the other thing that we'll mention here today is kind of where we left off last time. Respiration, the aerobic version of respiration happens in three main steps. Glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport. And so far we've only talked a little bit about the first step. We'll talk a little bit more about it today. And again, that step is glycolysis. And we said last time that word glycolysis means what? Glucose. Glucose, what? What are we doing to the glucose? Breaking, splitting, tearing, splitting of glucose. But the cool thing about glycolysis is it's the first step in both kinds of respiration. It happens exactly the same way in every living organism on Earth. The first thing that happens, glucose needs to be split. It happens in a place that every cell has, which is the cytoplasm, or you might see it called the cytosol. Glycolysis makes three main products during the process. It makes a little bit of ATP. So it took a little energy from the sugar and used it to make some ATP. It also makes another form of stored energy. 
sort of like what that we made in photosynthesis. What does this look a lot like? NADPH. Same kind of thing. Think of it like a charged up battery. And the, the energy to charge this battery didn't come from the sun, it came from where? From the glucose, from the food. And then, I'll get you in a second. What's left of the sugar, essentially the sugar got split in half. So essentially there are two three carbon molecules left over. Glucose was a six carbon thing, right? C6, H2O6. Essentially we split that in half and we got these two three carbon things called pyruvates that are left behind. Yes sir, you have a question? You have that flying plane, is it Greenland or those are your boats? The flying plane? Yeah. You have a little plant that has some little teeth and then like when something lands on it. You mean a Venus flytrap? Oh. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. There, there are a couple of plants that will eat bugs, right? There's a bean fly trap. There's a pitcher plant. There's several of them. So, so after you said there's several of them. It's a plant that has leaves, sort of shaped like jaws. Is that a little plant off of Mario? Probably, yeah. It's based, probably based on that. But anyway, back to what I was saying. I'm going to tell you that those plants that eat bugs are eating bugs to get energy. Because they're doing photosynthesis. They're making sugar, just like any other plants. Here's the reason they're eating bugs. They tend to live in places where the soil is bad and doesn't have much mineral vitamin stuff in it, like uh, nitrogen and such. Remind your teachers, if you have not spent your large blue envelope with makeup magazine orders, please do so immediately. The following students need to see Ms. Webster at the beginning of block a break today. Jordan Barnes, Kendrick Johnson, William Ignat, and Dalen Morris. Thank you. All right. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Those, those plants that end up eating bugs are not eating them to get calories and energy. They're eating them to get nutrition, which a plant would normally get out of the soil, like nitrogen and magnesium and minerals. The stuff that a plant would normally get with its roots, they can't get because they're living in places where the soil is not good. So they're not, they're not eating it to be eating food. They're eating it like you would take like a vitamin tablet. That's why the plants are eating the bugs. They're getting their vitamins and minerals from <laughs> What? Same, same for all of them. Pitcher plant, leader slide trap. Did you know that a bat sometimes makes a neutral bond with it? Didn't know that. Like it'll live inside of it. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Why well, why is the Venus flytrap there? Is that what you're saying? The, the soil in a jungle is usually not very good because as soon as some nutrient gets into the soil, there's all those plants and they suck it out almost as soon as it gets in there. It's kind of, it's just cycling really fast through the jungle floor because there's so many plants there. All right, one other thing I want to mention here about glycolysis. Glycolysis, if, if you remember it, when we were starting to watch that video yesterday, the little piece of it that we saw, he says glycolysis is one of those things where you have to spend money to what? Make money. Here's what he meant. And let me just show you a picture here. And this is going to look a little complicated. You don't need to know the complication of it. Glycolysis, we start with glucose. But what are we trying to do to that glucose? Break it down and get what out of it? Get energy out of it. But here's the deal. Right here we're not getting the ATP out. We're putting ATP in, right? This is putting ATP in, putting ATP in. It turns out to make it break. It's something just going to break on its own. No, things don't just break on their own. They have something that has to be done to them to break them, right? So to begin with, you have to invest a little energy into the process. What's the energy call that makes a reaction get going? Activation. Yeah, these two ATPs, we might think of them like activation energy. They get this started. You have to put in a little energy to get it going. And then when it's all said and done, what ends up happening is the plant ends up making four ATPs. So you put in two, you made four, so you're two to the good, right? We might say we do what to. What's the word for what you have after everything's been canceled out? Like on your paycheck, after they took out the taxes and all that stuff, what do we call what's left? 
we net, net, we might say we net two ATPs. So again, glycolysis makes three main things. It makes NADH, stored energy that used to be in the sugar. It makes some ATP, stored energy that used to be in the sugar. And what's left is these three carbon half of a glucose, essentially. We call those power rebates. Yes, sir? So this is kind of like interest, right? Um, yeah, you might think of it like interest. Yeah, that you, you, you invested some money, and then you got a return. Well, not as Let's see, when you get a $100 million contract, you do it, you 